Well, hello. Uh, this is my submission for FTT 210, uh, my muzzle loader build with Sonoran Desert Institute. And uh, if anyone is following along or looks this up, it's think about taking a class or anything like that. Remember, I'm not a gunsmith. I'm just a dude, just a student. If you're watching this uh, for any advice, uh, I hope it helps. This is just part one, uh, week four of the class. So this week's assignment, I uh, went ahead and installed the lock plate and did the inletting for that. Installed the butt plate and again the inletting for that and the toe plate. And that's where we're at for this week. Uh, go feel free to follow along with the rest of the video. Thanks and I hope you enjoy it. On the bench today we have a Tradition Shenandoah muzzle loader kit. This is a, you can see there, Tradition Shenandoah 50 cal. Um, it's the kit that they send you with FTT 210 and we're going to build this kit. So this is phase one and uh, that we're going through in week four. And the first step that we do is uh, they send you this Permatex Prussian blue uh, non-drying stuff and it basically takes the place of, of inletting black. So you're going to get some of this on a brush and uh, I already did all this so I'm kind of showing you here but you, you brush this around the outside edge is what I did of your uh, your lock and then on these parts that protrude to make sure that when you set this thing in uh, the stock comes from traditions semi inlet okay so it's a it's a rough inlet but very carefully not to get any of that on your stock you're gonna let that in and then when you take it out you'll see where I had some uh, some of the transfer it'll transfer over and you'll see your high spots where it's binding okay and when you have those you can uh, you can use this um, palm chisel or these gouges depending if you need to get around one of these radius these tools are great for that and you're gonna remove just enough material now mine was not very tight at all it was it was pretty close so I ended up using this thing more as a scraper and uh, just removed a few thousandths so that the lock you don't have to beat it out okay it's it's not loose in there it's just right okay goldilocks it's in there it's not wobbling around but i don't have to put any force on it for it to come out and once we have that the next step is to uh just um temporarily we're gonna put it in place with our lock screws and put our washers on but check this out tradition sent me <laughs> see a problem there i got one slotted screw and one uh didn't make it through that part of the machining process so i'm gonna have to time out and go maybe hacksaw myself a uh, a slot in this thing all right all right no big deal got her started with a needle file and then just hit it with a hacksaw and touched up with a little perma blue and Passable, that'll work. So now I'm gonna go ahead, put on our washers, and uh, just get this thing snugged up. Remember, always use the right size screwdriver. go all right now in this step we're going to clean up and, and uh kind of rough polish our brass polish isn't even the right word we're just uh we're cleaning it up so the first step was to take a, a nice fine file single cut file and go in and any of the uh casting marks that were left on it uh to take that down and these again these were pretty clean so uh, the next step Let's take 150 grit and go one direction and I kind of got carried away on a lot of this stuff without filming it um, but you can still see here I've got some of my 150 grit marks going crossways then you're going to take uh, 180 I've, I thought I had 180 ball I have is 220 but it seems to be doing the job and go to 90 degrees so on all these pieces you want to whichever direction you sand when you move to a finer grit, 
change the direction 90 degrees and just keep sanding until all the previous marks are gone out of it. That's for file work, that's for sanding. Um, and, uh, you know, so whenever we step up and, and really make this pop and shine and polish up, we'll switch directions back this way and this way as many times as it takes as you increase the grip. Yeah. All right, and here we can see um, out toward the edges, I've still got a few little marks here from the 150, um, but for the most part, we've covered all of them up with the with the 220. Um, when we go to finalize this and put the final polish on it, I'll, I'll really get after it, but you want to be careful with brass because it's really easy to start removing too much material. Um, don't get in a hurry here. Just take your time uh, and then when you're doing edges like this um, you want to have a block you know with your sanding paper something like that because uh, if, it's a bad example here you get the idea roll it up and make sure that you have a nice solid block backer um, when you're doing your flats Otherwise, your finger or something soft, that's fine here because if you can see, this is not only is it concaved here, but it's convexed this direction. So something soft like your finger is fine here, okay, to keep, to keep that profile. But if you want to keep something nice and flat for doing this edge here, these sorts of things, um, always use a backer. All right, so now we're going to work on fitting our butt plate to the butt of the stock and as you can see, it just doesn't quite line up right. So we're going to use our um, our Prussian blue or our stock uh, inletting black, and it'll leave lines for us where we need to remove material. I'll show you that. All right, at this point, we've got our uh, inletting blue here and transferring it over to the butt stock. You can see, if I put this on here, that our stock's quite a bit wider than the butt plate. Looking at it this way, make sure we're centered up. All right, so quite a bit of material is gonna have to be used, but for the initial fitment, get it on there and, uh, <clears throat> you know, with, with both hands when I'm not filming, I get it on there and you wanna tap that down at a 45 degree angle, okay? so like so. So you're getting forward and down pressure both at the same time. And that's gonna give you your marks, which you can see I need to inlet there. And uh, down here it's making some contact. So just uh, tweak and peek, you know, just keep taking a little bit away and uh, test fit it again. We're gonna have to do this a whole bunch of times until we get it just right. All right, so our fitment. Looks pretty rough right now, obviously, but this is the rough fitting. I got a little tear out right here, you can see, but I think I'm gonna be okay. It didn't go deep enough. Uh, obviously, a lot of material needs to be removed, but that's not great. Um, and uh, when we, I already did the uh, 45 degree tap on here, so let's see what it looks like when we take it off. And pretty consistent. You know, obviously it's not perfect, but pretty consistent uh, contact being made all the way around. So I think for now, I'm gonna call that good. Um, and when we come back and do the final fitment, I might uh, see how it looks, what the reveal looks like um, between the brow. Like that's, I don't know how I feel about that right there it's a pretty big gap but all through here it's not terrible yeah so now we've got our butt plate screwed in and again just a rough fitment <clears throat> we need to put our toe plate in place now i've gone ahead and and profiled the edge this will focus kind of see that there we go uh 
kind of profiled the edge. I'm gonna to have to probably take off a little more, but you can see if we put that in, it's too long. So what we're gonna do, I've gone ahead and set this up here up against the butt plate and made a little line here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove some of that material. All right, here we have the toe plate installed. And we're gonna profile all this uh, when we go to finish it. But for now, we've got this installed. I forgot to mention that on here and on the butt plate screws. Uh, so I lined them out, center punched where the hole was and drilled a pilot hole. You wanna make sure that that is no larger than the shank, the, the inner size. Um, the inner part of the wood screw, you know, not the threads, the thickness of the threads, but the, the shank itself. And then I put some beeswax on them to protect the wood in there and just make them go in a little easier. But here we go. One toe plate installed.